Senator Olekino. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, let me begin by appreciating the statement by Senator Gerard Gay. In the last parliament, I sat in this very house and we passed the T bill. And at first, I was a bit uh, concerned that maybe we are redoing it again. But I've just been informed that uh, that bill that we passed here did not pass the National Assembly uh, because the time of the election was nearby. Mr. Speaker, it saddens me when I hear that uh, we have tea which is stored in Mombasa. I know very well that the demand for tea, Kenyan tea around the world, is steadily increasing. I know very well that Pakistan leads in the import, which is actually very good for our FX. They spend almost $520 million invest, you know, importing tea from this country. I know very well that the UK also follows. They import about, I think they spend about $111 million. Egypt spends about uh, maybe uh, about $300 million importing tea. I'm baffled, Mr. Speaker, because earlier this year, I saw the, the uh, Deputy President launching a strategy for the tea sector. And there were stories of a big warehouse costing over $3 billion being built to store the tea. And that shocked me because I've always known that the tea industry, the reason why the auction was set in Mombasa is because whenever the auction has been done there, tea was not stored there. Tea was just going out of the country. So I think it is imperative that the current, the new cabinet secretary in charge of agriculture should actually look at this issue. And the committee should look at what the previous cabinet secretary did. Because I remember the previous cabinet secretary, former Senator Linturi, went to Pakistan, had bilateral talks with the Pakistan government on in terms of increasing the uptake of tea from this country. So what happened? So instead of just picking up from here, uh, and moving on, we should look at what happened so that it ad advises our future. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, when it comes to the issue of legislation, I hope that uh, when we pass this tea bill this time around, it is not going to be reactional. And then next time again, because of certain specific interest, you know, we now again come with other amendments. Let us now exhaust any form of amendment so that we can be able to make laws which will be able to stay and you know, live in this world for the rest of uh, God's creation. Mr. Speaker, secondly, on this issue of uh, sports, I've listened keenly to the contribution made by my colleagues. And the one that strikes me is the one that was brought about by Senator Sifuna, where he's suggesting that each county should set aside 1%. I believe if we really want to improve the, the sports sector in this country. This Senate should now bring in a motion to set up a conditional grant because it becomes very difficult to go and tell the governor of Nandi or the MCS of Nandi that set aside 1% of your budget to be able to do what? To improve on sport. The best thing we can be able to do, just like we passed a motion for uh, a sports complex in Mombasa, to set up, uh, we have a con conditional grant which are ring-fenced. And then, once we have done that, Mr. Speaker, it is important for us to remind ourselves of our sovereignty power. This issue of depending on the West so much for every decision we make. I was sitting in this house when we were looking at reports on FK, FKA, and uh, Sifuna is right. Senator Sifuna is right. At that time, it was very difficult for us to bring in any changes. So once we have our own funds, and we build our own, we nurture our own talent, we can actually be able to go very far. We have experts in Narrow County, Mr. Speaker. We have Billy Conchella. Billy Conchella was one of the, you know, he set the world record in 800 meters. I think it was just uh, broken recently by, it was broken by um, Rudisha, who is also from Kilgoris. So I think if we tap into the resource of these legends who have played, who have demonstrated to the world that, yes, in Kenya, we have great men and women who can be able to, you know, to run, you know, ensure endurance, we can actually be able to go very far. Mr. Speaker, as I conclude, I want to remind my colleague, the distinguished Senator Beth Siango, that 
the moment we now start praising the executive is the moment we fail. No wonder, Mr. Speaker, today, if you go on social media, you will find two lawyers who, who uh, Senator Sifuna has said, is going to give direct tickets to be able to run for office, opening, you know, their uh, negative views of the Senate. They are saying we've become sort of like flower girls and boys for the executive. I want to remind us that we are here to check the executive. We're not here to start saying, oh, thank you, President, for swearing in our colleagues from our political party. You know, let us be reminded that we are here as parliament to be able to oversight the executive. You know, we are not here to become an, an extension of the executive. I completely detest that, Mr. Speaker. And I want to remind my dear sister, the distinguished Senator Beth Shienko, well, that... What is your point of order, Senator Chiranke? Mr. Speaker, understanding on the 101, there is what we call responsibility of facts. Mr. Speaker, is it in order for the minority whip in this house, seated next to SG of ODM, when ODM Central Committee sat under the leadership of our brother and the next AU chairman, Barbara Ila Odinga, and resolved to work with the government, is he challenging the position of ODM Central Committee? Yet resolution was there, Mr. Speaker. Can he table, Senator, Mr. Speaker, Senator can he table Chirangai, the evidence to the same? Senator Chiranga, you're totally out of order. Have a seat and allow Senator Olekina to conclude his uh, intervention. Mr. Mr. Speaker, you know, I'm in this house to ensure that we respect the separation of powers. I'm in this house to ensure that we respect the rule of law and the constitution. Mr. Speaker, when I was sitting here, and I'm, I'm going to now deviate from encourage, you know, advising my sister, you know, I sat here and I received a supplementary order paper. And in the supplementary order paper, order number eight, Mr. Speaker, talks about amending the division of revenue. Mr. Speaker, I've been in this Senate for the last seven years or so. And by the time we pass the division of revenue, there is a process. We start with, uh, you know, estimates, the budget policy statement. We go to media term debt strategy. And then eventually, we go and we pass the division of revenue. We did that. Why are we reinventing the wheel? Mr. Speaker, let us just for once respect the rule of law. You know, I sat in this house, very house, and we actually passed the third generation formula, which deter determined how much money is sent to counties and how much money is maintained. We set a bare minimum. Now what we are being asked to do is to now go against the Constitution. You know, I mean, this is ludicrous. I, you know, there's no time, Mr. Speaker, that we've actually even, the money that we've passed has all gone to counties. Treasury has always had a debt. So I think when we talk about these issues, let us be factual and let us remember that we are guided by principles. We have the rule of law. You know, the moment we start now opening the division of revenue debate, we're actually going to be abdicating on our duties. You know, then at that point, I'll just tell us, let us just fall and go. Because if you're telling us that what we passed here, 400 billion, we are now being told to reduce, we forget that when you look at the division of revenue uh, uh, bill, or rather act, if you look at section 5 of that, it says any shortfall is absorbed by the national government. You know, so why is the national government not absorbing it? Colleagues, let us defend our counties. That is why we are here. You know, we are here to make sure that we defend the rule of law. You know, we stop dancing to the tune of the executive. Yes, the Gen Z's are saying that there is a lot of uh, wastage of public funds. But it's not about our county's structures. Our counties need to be built. We need to be able to support our counties. Yes. When it comes to the issue of accountability, we now deal with the issue of accountability. Yes. Madam Speaker, we have the DPP, who is now notorious in making sure he's withdrawing corruption cases, and yet we keep on talking about fighting corruption. You know, ESCC is also there. In fact, I always say ESCC is the most corrupt body in this country. Yes. 
You know, because they don't really respect their institutions. So, Madam Speaker, as I conclude, let us remember that we are here for a very short time. The time we are here, let us make sure that we leave a mark in this country called Kenya. You know, this issue where we have laws and they are only good on paper or they are determined by other interest bodies where we just make laws which are reactional must come to an end. So, Madam Speaker, the Senate is there to oversight the executive but not to be an extension of the executive or to dance to the tunes of the executive. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Senator. Uh, Senator, Senator Chirari K. Samson Kiprutich. Mr. Speaker, I have not spoken on commenting on... No. I was just reading my statements. Huh? No, I wanted to comment on, on performance of athletics. Mr. Speaker, Madam Speaker, thank you very much. I want to support Senator Crystal Lasige, Madam Speaker. On the issue of performance of athletics, uh, Senator Mr. Sifuna, Speaker. Senator Sifuna, what is your point of order? Resume your seat, Senator Chirarike. Oh, Honorable Speaker, it has been the tradition on this floor that when people have read their statements, they allow other people who have not spoken to contribute to the statements. But you cannot read, he read five statements. No, now he wants to comment on another statement. Allow other people to also contribute, and they are on the queue. Honorable Chair, it is not proper. Okay, Senator Chirarike. Just to ensure, just to ensure equity, and that uh, equity and and justice to be seen to be done, let me allow other senators. I'll still give you a chance to comment on the other statements, but uh, please sit ground because you read the statements, and let me I let me on let me call uh, let me call Senator uh, let me call Senator Wamatinga. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker, and let me also start by thanking Senator Sifuna. Indeed, these are some of the people that we need in this country so that equity can prevail. Uh, Madam Speaker, I also want to add my voice into the various statements that have been laid today. Indeed, let me start by commending the head of the state, none other than His Excellency Dr. William Samoe Ruto, for forming a broad-based government. Mr. Speaker, sir. It is not about the individuals who are named in the cabinet where they came from. It is the spirit. Once we realize that this country belongs to all of us, once we realize that there is need for us to talk with one another, once we realize that nobody has monopoly of knowledge, once we realize that this country is greater than any one of us, that is the moment that will start moving this country forward. Madam Speaker, the issue of sports in this country has indeed and made Kenya a great name across the, the world. However, we have not done as a country justice to the ambassadors who have done us so proud in ensuring that our name, our flag, and the national anthem has been sung in all Olympic stadiums across the, broad, the, the, the globe. And therefore, Madam Speaker, I, was to, I want to concur with my colleagues that it is the high time that we invest a little bit more in sports, but most importantly, we must come up with a policy. And I do agree that it is the high time that we start considering giving counties conditional grants so that we can ensure that they invest in sports. And that, Madam Speaker, should not stop there. We must come with a kind of a blueprint on how it should be implemented. Madam Speaker, we know that different counties are endowed with different resources, and that also goes for the sports. And therefore, Madam Speaker, it is imperative that we start exploring at avenues that we can give the young people who have those talents an opportunity to be able to compete in international arenas. That can only happen, Madam Speaker, if we put the equipment and the resources in place that will enable them to compete with their colleagues in other countries. Madam Speaker, the issue of tea, coffee, and milk, as has been said here, Madam Speaker, I sit in the Agricultural Committee and the attempt by the committee to ensure that we revive that sector by formulating bills and amending the laws that are there have not been very, very successful because we as a country 
have now started concentrating on non-issues and living issues that affect our people that are more important. The issue of coffee, Madam Speaker, the issue of tea, the issue of milk. When we were campaigning around this country, Madam